always give your horse a little extra love and TLC leading up to a horse show because just like for us, horse shows are stressful for your horse. Like when they travel and they get out of sorts, it can be stressful for them. And oftentimes they can get nervous, which can cause acid buildup in their tummies and they can get a little bit uncomfortable. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips to improve your scores this season and to help you have fun at your next horse show. This video is proudly sponsored by Purina Feed Greatness. Check out the description box below. There's some awesome coupons to help you if you wanna try out their grain. So first tip is it's very important to focus on the basics. So if you look at your test, if you print out your test sheet in the top corner of your test, it has the purpose of the test. And the first sentence there is that the horse demonstrates correct basics. So you always, 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 as you're getting ready for your show, want to focus on the basics. So what are the basics? Well, the basics are the training scale. The basics are the base of the training scale, which is rhythm, suppleness, and connection. There's also a PDF uh, that I have on the training scale, which you can download. Check out the description box. But before I start working on my test or thinking about the show, in every single ride, I start by focusing on rhythm. So rhythm means feeling the footfalls of the walk, the trot, the canter. So if I'm here at the walk, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If I'm at the trot, the trot is a two beat gate. And honestly, this seems so simple and silly, but just start counting when you're riding. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The reason that feeling the rhythm is really helpful is because it helps you to get in sync with your horse's motion and it helps your aids to be more effective because all the aids that you give, whether it's a turning aid or a bending aid, all of that will help to, for your aids to be more effective. So that's rhythm. Now, step number two is suppleness. The second level of the training scale is suppleness. How do you achieve suppleness? You achieve suppleness by getting your horse to bend in the body. So circles, serpentines, changes of direction. Like here I'm riding a three loop serpentine. That's a really good exercise for warming up your horse um, and really making sure that you can bend your horse evenly to the left and evenly to the right. And the reason that suppleness is really, really important is because suppleness is all about physical and mental relaxation. So when your horse is physically and mentally relaxed, then they're so much easier to ride and you can do a lot more things with your horse when they're relaxed physically and mentally. So second level of the training scale is suppleness. And then the third one is connection. So connection is the relationship of the hind leg through the back into the mouth. Connection is acceptance of the leg and of the rein. And the best exercise to work on connection are transitions. So you can do trot walk transitions. You can do trot canter transitions. Good boy. But just keep in mind that these basics are like the number one thing that you're getting scored on. So yes, you have to ride the movements that are required in the test. But if your basics aren't good, if your horse isn't supple, if your connection isn't good, you're not gonna get a good score. So even if you're preparing for a show, always focus on the basics. Tip number two, practice your center lines and your halts. This is something that we all forget to practice, but it's so important because every single test starts and finishes with a center line and a halt. So it's like the first impression that you give to the judge and it's also the last impression that you give. I highly recommend even just in your warm up, 
You know, we do a lot of times like change rain across the diagonal, but try just doing some center lines instead. Like just practice turning up the center line. Don't even do a halt transition. Just go straight. It's good to practice center line sometimes where you don't do a halt transition because otherwise your horse starts to anticipate halting at X if you do that every time. And then my best tip for the halt is let, if you're at the lower levels, you're allowed a few walk steps into the halt and really try to do the halt from your seat. The better you can do it from your seat, the more that you can do it from your seat, the more likely it is that your horse will halt round and stay nice. And they're also more likely to halt square. So I'm gonna pull my tummy in. I'm gonna try not to pull and just use my seat for the halt. Good boy. So don't drill your center lines in your halts. Just mix them in a little bit every day. That's tip number two. Tip number three is that three is the magic number. So what I like to do when I'm practicing my test is like, yes, you need to learn your test and yes, you need to ride it through from start to finish at least once before you go to the show. But I like to break it apart and practice one movement three times before going on. So I'm gonna show you an example of that. I think in training level test two, or sorry, I think in training level test three that you do a shallow loop serpentine and then you have to pick up the canner between K and A. So a lot of times, you know, you think, okay, I have, I have a test, I have a show coming up, I wanna practice the test and make sure that I can do the movement. So I'm gonna start my shallow loop serpentine, H, X, K. I'm gonna make sure that I'm nicely changing the bend here. And then I have my canner transition. I think it's actually between A and F. So I'm going to get my horse nicely bending, half halt, and canner. So that was actually pretty good. But a lot of times, if your horse isn't on the aids or they're not really knowing what's happening, that transition isn't gonna be good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trot and then I'm gonna practice the transition again at the same point. Good boy, good boy. And I'm gonna do the transition at the point where it is in the test three times so that my horse starts to associate that between A and F, he's gonna pick up the canner. So half halt, good boy, good boy. So three is the magic number. If you're having trouble with any movement in your test, good boy, buddy. I recommend practicing that movement three times and then moving on to the next movement because if you always just practice the test from start to finish and you practice it badly, then you're just practicing the mistakes. But if you go back and isolate a movement, practice it three times, usually like the first time your horse isn't expecting it. The second time is a little better because you know what to, to expect. And then the third time you can perfect it. So three is a magic number. Tip number four is always give your horse a little extra love and TLC leading up to a horse show. Because just like for us, horse shows are stressful for your horse. Like when they travel and they get out of sorts, it can be stressful for them. And oftentimes, they can get nervous, which can cause acid buildup in their tummies and they can get a little bit uncomfortable. And a lot of times too, when you travel, they don't drink enough water. Lots of times horses don't like different taste of water or if it's like a new plastic bucket, they may not like the smell of the plastic. So one thing that I always do when I'm going to a horse show is I give my horses Replenimash, which is a Purina product. It has a full serving of electrolytes and it also has Outlast in it, which helps to maintain your horse's gastric health and happiness. Outlast is honestly 
the most affordable and best product that I've found to help with my horse's gastric health. And so I give them replenimash at a horse show. I make it like really, really soupy with lots of water. And then at home, my horses are on Ultium Gastric Care. And I found that that's like the most affordable way to keep my horse's stomachs happy. A lot of times what happens at a horse show when your horse starts to get tense that they can have more acid buildup in their stomach and when they have that it can make them like even more tense and even more anxious and it just becomes this downward cycle. So that's what I do to help out my horses. And tip number five is smile and remember to have fun. And that's probably the most important tip but when we go to a horse show a lot of times we get super uptight and you know, we just forget that at the end of the day, we have horses to enjoy them and to love them. And you really want to be proud of your horse and just be enjoying the moment with your horse together. And I think that's honestly more important than your score or trying to do everything perfect is just to remember to smile, enjoy and have fun. So I hope you like this video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and also check out the description box if you're interested in getting some replenimash or some gastric care from Purina. Those are the two products that I use with my horses and I've been very happy with those products. And a big thank you to Purina for making this video possible today. I am very grateful for their support and of course for your support as well. So good luck at the, your next horse show and I hope you enjoyed this video. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Purina. Check the link in the description to sign up for Purina's Feed Greatness Challenge. You can get some awesome coupons and please clean up after your horse.